major companies have decided to change their policy of not using lab-created diamonds in jewelry in light of the increasing popularity of synthetic diamonds among the younger generation, which has promoted the business to rethink its attitude. Because of the increasing popularity of lab-grown gems, De Beers' natural diamond industry will probably be endangered, putting the revenues of competing lab-grown gem manufacturers at risk. The mechanisms that lead to the formation of natural diamonds can be replicated in a lab. Carbon atoms are transformed into magnificent and mesmerizing jewels we know as diamonds over millions of years of high heat and pressure, which is how natural diamonds develop. In the same manner that natural diamonds develop, but in a man-made process that takes weeks rather than millions of years, lab-created diamonds do the same. A diamond seed is the smallest bit of a diamond that can be used to create man-made diamonds. Seeds are stowed away in a room that mimics the conditions of the Earth's crust so that they may germinate successfully. Chemically similar synthetic diamonds will ultimately be formed from the seed, which is covered in pure carbon and will eventually turn into a natural diamond. Diamonds may be manufactured using HPHT and CVP techniques, both of which involve high pressure and high temperatures CVD. The diamond seed and the carbon atoms that cover it are subjected to 1,500 degrees Celsius or 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit and 1.5 million pounds per square inch of pressure during HPHT. CVD, on the other hand, employs a combination of chemical vapors that break down and solidify into crystalline carbon atoms rather than heat and pressure. The end product is the same in both cases, a man-made diamond, generated in a couple of weeks from nothing. Even though we believe that diamonds are beautiful and make excellent choices when it comes to high-end jewelry purchases, we do not subscribe to the marketing that De Beers has been pushing down our throats for more than a century, convincing people that they must purchase a diamond when they get engaged. The main purpose is not to persuade individuals that they should purchase a diamond, but rather to educate them about diamonds. Companies are there to assist customers who are interested in purchasing diamonds and getting the most for their money. People discover the correct mix of quality to ensure that you receive the largest diamond possible within your budget while also assisting you in avoiding any rocks or shoals that may be encountered along the road. Before we go, let me state that I agree that synthetic diamonds seem to be precisely like real diamonds so long as we're talking to lab-grown diamonds and not diamond simulants or cubic zirconia. So, not going to delve into the technical specifics of how diamonds are created since that isn't the point of this video. Diamonds created in a laboratory are still diamonds. Just take a look at this James Allen diamond, which is just stunning. What are your thoughts about it? Does it have the appearance of a diamond? Yes, it does, for the simple reason that it is one. It is impossible to determine the difference between lab-created diamonds and real diamonds without the use of specialist equipment, even if you're a certified gemologist in your field. Look at the grading report to see whether the diamond is lab-grown or natural. This is the most accurate method to detect the difference between the two. For example, a professional gemologist would employ magnification to examine the nature of the inclusions in a diamond to determine if it was mined or created in a laboratory setting. When comparing a natural diamond to a lab-created diamond, the inclusions on a natural diamond seem somewhat different. The diamond may reflect light differently from a synthetic diamond in certain instances. In general, however, when comparing a lab-created diamond to a real diamond, it is impossible to tell the difference between the two. Whether or not synthetic diamonds are worth anything is a question that many people are asking. The million dollar question isn't that simple to answer. In other words, they're less expensive, but you're getting less for your money. You shouldn't think of your diamond as an investment. However, you shouldn't completely disregard the worth. Let's imagine that after purchase, the typical natural diamond keeps 50% of its value. In the long run, you should be able to obtain at least half of the initial purchase price back if you decide to sell the diamond. Many people offer you a case study. 
you were able to recover a beautiful 1.21 carat diamond. At $5,220, it's a fantastic bargain. We contacted a few firms that buy diamonds from individuals to see what they'd be willing to pay. For $2,820, they were willing to buy the diamond that they had fallen in love with. Only a quarter of the initial cost is left. The value of diamonds will only grow if the price rises as it has traditionally done. Now you might be thinking about whether it is a good idea to buy a lab-created diamond or not. Will it be a good idea to gift someone jewelry made out of these laboratory-made diamonds? Well, this is a tricky question. If I was asked whether a person should invest in a lab-created diamond or not, my answer would be both yes and no. According to technical analysis, it's difficult to assume that the prices of lab-grown diamonds would not continue to fall. There is no limit to the amount of product available and economies of scale combined with innovation will continue to drive prices down. Will their popularity diminish as a result of this? That is a difficult question to answer. Emeralds are stunning. There is no question about that. Diamonds, on the other hand, have established themselves as a must-have item for couples who are planning to be married. So what would you say to someone who is currently looking for an engagement ring? When compared to a genuine diamond, purchasing a diamond ring such as any of the official stores will undoubtedly save you money. However, you must be prepared to accept the considerable probability that you may see something comparable in the future at a far lower price. You might also want to note that it is possible to choose a lab-created diamond for a variety of other reasons, but it is important to understand that lab-created diamonds will lose the majority of their value over time. No matter what the situation is, you should never feel pressured to acquire a diamond. If you are, on the other hand, you must be conscious of the considerations around the worth of your work. For example, if I am considering purchasing a product, I would be reluctant to spend a significant amount of money on it if it is likely that the same item would be available for a fraction of the price I paid for it soon. Here, it is important to note that a lab-created diamond, on the other hand, will give you more wow for your dollar than any other kind of diamond when it comes to gaining the most sparkle for your money. That's all for today's video, and thanks for watching it. Before you leave, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to never miss any updates. I will see you in the next video, take care, and thanks for watching.